allegations peddled by corrupt officials and Russian agents and promote and amplify them here in the United States in our political system. Weren't media groups skeptical of your claims? Um, most media groups, uh, I'd probably say all except for Fox and a few other uh, right-wing media groups uh, didn't want to take any of the information and that ag uh, aggravated uh, Rudy Giuliani and John Solomon and other players. And the main group that was being pushed through was Fox, uh, John, Sean Hannity, and some other media personnel over there. But then there was also other people that were doing the bidding for the Russian uh, people in Congress, like Senator Ron Johnson, like Congressman Pete Sessions that sits here right now that was with me from the very beginning on this journey into finding up the digging dirt on Joe Biden. Is Putin's war on Ukraine today, which has cost hundreds of thousands of people's lives, is that part of the vaunted Russia hoax, Russia hoax? Absolutely not. Is it real? Yes, absolutely. Um, I want to ask you a more personal question, if I might, Mr. Parnas, because uh, in my several years living through this extraordinary period of American history, I've tried to ask people like Michael Cohen and Cassidy Hutchinson. I've wondered about people like General Milley, General Kelly. Why did you break with all of the deceit and corruption and lies of Donald Trump? How did you get out of that culture? I mean, it was very difficult. I actually had to hit a brick wall myself and get arrested and uh, to be able to get out of that cult. Uh, because when you're in that cult, when you're around them, you're only, you have blinders on, and you're only able to see a certain amount of information. You're only able to hear the certain amount of information. You're not allowed to go out of the outside out of the circle. And if you go outside of the circle, then you're not in the circle. So eventually, you brainwash yourself to believing certain things that are not true. When I was arrested and able to and had some time to reflect and really understand what was going on, I started realizing, looking back and thinking back to moments in time where I was started thinking myself that this is, this can't be true and we we're doing something wrong. Well, thank you for telling the truth and helping America to end this nightmare. I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. Chair now recognizes the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the ranking member just said that Joe quote Joe Biden was opposed to corruption. Really. So opposed, he leveraged a billion dollars of American tax money to fire the prosecutor in Ukraine who was investigating Zolachevsky at Burisma, the, the company Hunter Biden sat on the board of. Wow. And the, and the prosecutor who replaced Shokin that Mr. Parna has referenced in his opening statement, Mr. Lutsenko, guess what he did? He took Zolachevsky off the wanted list and dropped the charges. Wow, he's really, really opposed to corruption there. Mr. Bobulinski, who's the big guy? Joe Biden. Are you sure about that? Because when Joe, when, uh, Joe you're Biden, sure? you're sure? I'm a thousand percent sure. Because when Hunter Biden did his deposition under oath, he said, "I don't know who it is," even though he was copied on an email that said, "H will hold 10 percent for the big guy." You sure it's the big guy? Is is Joe Biden? A thousand percent. And there's other text messages that back that up that the brave whistleblowers Shapley and Ziegler have produced. Not from my phones, not from my BlackBerry that I took screenshots from. They took them from subpoenas directly from Apple's iCloud that back up the fact that Hunter knew the big guy was Joe Biden. The big as guy is the brand. The big guy is the lift. The big guy is the one who showed up at golf outings, who did took phone calls and meetings and lunches and dinners with Hunter Biden and his business associates. Is that right? Correct. <laughs> Mr. Galanis. You referenced in your opening statement, May 4th, 2014, you were at a party at a restaurant in Brooklyn, New York. Can you tell me who else was there? Yeah, uh, the, it was a birthday party, um, so there were more than 100 people there, but amongst them uh, was Devin Archer, myself, the host, Alex Kuklarski, uh Yelena Baterna, her husband, uh, and then Hunter Byron joined. Uh, and after tell us, I, I, at, I think uh, you referenced a phone call that took place. Tell us about, tell the committee what happened with that phone call. Who was, who was involved in that phone call? Uh, as, I, as I testified uh, in my opening statement, it was uh, Yelena Batarina, um, uh, her husband, myself, uh, Hunter initiating it, uh, Joe Biden on the speakerphone, and Devin Archer. So there was a little pull aside where that group of people you just described were pull aside, pulled aside, and Hunter Biden called his father's, or called the vice president. Is that accurate? That's accurate. And then tell me what, what was discussed on the call. 
Uh, the discussion that testified was it was a relatively short discussion, but it was a discussion about their uh, Yelena and Yuri uh, coming to town. Um, that uh, as, they, as they testified specifically, they, they, they talked about uh, being good to his boy, and um, it was. Uh, uh, was, ended, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Mr. Gilas, let me ask you this. Did you get the impression yes. Joe Biden was expecting the call? Yes. To me, it was clearly set up ahead of time. It was an arranged call. So this was this was arranged. This was coordinated. Hunter Biden calls his father, then vice president. And I think in your deposition, you said he said this. I'm here with our friends that I told you were coming to town. So it's our friends and I told you this was going to happen, which suggests that it was most definitely coordinated. Is that accurate? That's accurate, yes. And again, Ms. Uh, can you tell us, uh, tell the committee who Ms. Batarina is again? Uh, a Russian billionaire, uh, wife of the former mayor of Moscow, served for near 20 years as the mayor. Um, she's, and she's, is, uh, she's the wealthiest woman in Russia. She'd already given money, right. she'd already given money to Hunter Biden in his business before this uh, meeting in May, and then subsequent to that meeting, she committed to give more money. Is that accurate? That's accurate. So subsequent to the coordinated call, the arranged call that Hunter Biden had with the Vice President of the United States, the wealthiest woman in Russia commits to give millions of dollars more to Hunter Biden's business. Is that all accurate, Mr. Galanis? That is accurate, yes. And again, this, this was a pull aside done at this meeting, and you think and, and you know that it was coordinated. Is this is this what they call is this what they call access to the brand, access to the Biden lift? With, is, is that what you would describe it as, Mr. Galanis? I don't think there's any doubt that that was the intent of the call and uh, the objective, yes. And it followed the motto. It followed the 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 statement that you all agreed to say it, forget it, write it, regret it. This wasn't put in writing. This was a phone call on a speaker that was all There's no writing about this. It was all done that way. That was how the business operated. Is that correct, Mr. Galanis? Yes. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes his Mr. Lynch from Massachusetts for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to make an observation here. Uh, I've been on this committee, this investigating committee, uh, for over 20 years. And as an attorney before that, I've had sufficient training and experience to say that with high confidence that when you review the entire record of evidence of these hearings going back over a year, um, you've actually provided more evidence to impeach Donald Trump for a third time than you have in so much as laying a glove on President Biden. We keep on hearing about the Biden family. When you hear someone say the Biden family, that translates into we have no evidence on the president, so we're going to use the Biden family to try to implicate uh, President Biden. But uh, by the constant bumbling and, and continually shifting arguments here, uh, you've done nothing more than exonerate uh, President Biden. Uh, we heard initially from, uh, for months, we heard about the, the Hunter Biden laptop. And, uh, you know, there, there were absolutely some embarrassing uh, photos on that and uh, some, some awful uh, information about uh, Hunter Biden's personal life. I will admit that. Um, then you bring in your own witnesses, your legal experts before this committee and have them testify. And what they said was amazing. They said there was no evidence to even suggest that there was support for articles of impeachment against the president. That was your legal experts, the Republican legal experts that said that. Then we have statements by Mr. Jordan saying that, uh, that Mr. Smirnov was the most corroborating witnesses witness that the Republicans had, the, the, the strongest witness that they had. And, of course, after that, we find out through the Trump-appointed uh, prosecutor that all of the information that Mr. Smirnov had provided was fabricated, false, and submitted by the inducement of Russian agents uh, going after President Biden and trying to undermine uh, our democratic system. 
And now we, we come to a point where, since that witness blew up, now we're, we're going to prison. And we're, we're reaching out to witnesses who have been convicted and sentenced to prison for stealing $80 million from the pensions of innocent workers. We, we can't get any lower at this point. That's your star witness. I want to I want to remind people he's sitting in prison. That's why he can't be here today. He's sitting in prison for scamming workers pensions. I mean, how low can you get? Then it's the Republicans idea that this is the best guy they can get to testify against the president. This is the best guy they can get. A guy sitting in prison who can't even be here. Mr. Parnas, uh, you've, you've talked about your own direct involvement uh, with Mr. Giuliani. And you, you said that your mission was to dig up dirt on, on President Biden. Can you, can you talk to us about uh, the coordination between yourself and Mr. Giuliani? Thank you for being here. Thank you, Congressman. So basically, Julie, it was a shadow diplomacy run by Trump and Giuliani, where Giuliani was the shadow diplomacy secretary of state. Um, I was his right hand and basically the point person in Ukraine to not only dig up, validate, search, whatever needed to be done to try to find up some corruption against Joe or Hunter Biden to be able to present. Uh, once uh, I would receive whatever information I received, I would then uh, meet with him, uh, John Solomon, other members of the team like Pete Sessions and uh, Derek Harvey or other people there to discuss what we found. At that point from there, Giuliani would then go to the White House and share with the president. And that was the line of communication. You said also in your testimony that, that members of this committee, the Republican leadership should have known, should have known before Smirnoff was, was uh, indicted that this information was fabricated about President Biden. Could you talk about that? Congressman Lynch, not that they should have known, they did know. They knew exactly what was going on. They knew that the evidence was not vetted. This information was just coming in from anywhere from left, right field, and it was being pushed straight to the halls of Congress without zero vetted, vet, vetification of it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gentlemen, Chairman, my time has expired, and I go back. Gentlemen, time's expired. Before I recognize uh, Mr. Palmer, I would like to enter into the record the testimony of Tony Bobolinsky with the committee on February 13, 2024. It corrects the record of uh, Representative Garcia's, who did not provide your entire testimony. Uh, on page 147, you told the committee about your understanding of who invited you to the events referenced by Mr. Garcia. So without objection, I'd like to enter into the record the entire uh, transcribed interview of Tony Bobolinsky. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to enter for the record an article from today's Daily Beast entitled Texts Reveal More Russia Ties for Key Anti-Biden Witness Bobolinsky. Okay, Daily Beast. Without objection. Chair now recognizes uh, Mr. Palmer from Alabama for five minutes. Mr. Bobolinsky, I have very limited time and I want to get through a lot of information, so please answer these questions with a yes or no, if, if you don't mind. You have met Joe Biden, uh, isn't that correct? Correct. Uh, in fact, you had a meeting with Joe Biden, isn't that correct? Two of them. One of those times was before the Milken Conference in Los Angeles, May of 2017, is that correct? It was during the Milken Conference. You provided a great deal of documentation to this committee. I want to show you some messages between you and Hunter Biden, be on the screen here, in May of 2017 before uh, you first had a meeting with Joe Biden. These are messages between you and Hunter Biden dated May 2nd, 2017. Do you recognize these? I do. At the bottom, Hunter wrote, Dad, not in now until 11, let's me and um, Jim meet at 10 at Beverly Hilton where he's staying. Jim is James Biden, President Biden's brother, is that correct? Correct. The next set of messages is, uh, if you put those on screen, is between another business associate of Hunter Biden's and you. His name is James. Do you recognize it? I do. At the top, you write, about to meet Hunter, Jim, and I guess Joe at Beverly Hilton Hotel. Joe is now President Joe Biden, is that correct? Correct. This chat between you and Joe Biden, Joe Biden's, uh, Jim Biden, uh, Joe Biden's brother, you write to Jim, great to meet you and spend some time together. Please thank Joe for this time. It was great to talk, thanks Tony B. You met with Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and Jim Biden 
the night before the Milken Conference in 2017. Is that correct? I did, and Jim Biden perjured himself by trying to deny that. Thank meeting. you, Mr. Bobolinsky. That was at the Beverly Hilton, uh, correct? Correct. You can provide more details around that meeting. What was the purpose of that meeting? I, I didn't ask for the meeting, um, so I wish Hunter Biden was sitting next to me and he could under oath describe it, but <clears throat> the only reason why I was meeting with Joe Biden <clears throat> and the only reason why I was there is because I was the CEO of the enterprise that they were putting together with the Chinese company CFC. So can you give me a little more detail about what was discussed in the meeting? Well, as I said earlier, before Joe Biden showed up, uh, Hunter and Jim Biden uh, coached me, asked, said a sort of outline that we wouldn't go into a lot of details. So through the 45 to 60 minute meeting I had with Joe Biden, I think it was about 10.40 p.m. after he flew across country, we talked about my background, my family's military background, the different business ventures I'd done around the world, the family I worked with. Joe spent time talking about his family, some of the tragedies that they had lived through. And, um, and at a high level, Hunter actually introduced me to Joe because before Joe came and sat down with us, Hunter said, hey, give me five to 10 minutes. I need to read my father in on it. So when you're referencing Joe and Hunter's father, you're referencing President Joe Biden. I am. Correct. Uh, these four images, uh, uh, well, in this message you sent to James again, you said you spent more time with Joe and Jim this morning. And to be factually correct, that's President Joe Biden and, and James Biden, his, his brother. Also saw them last night, including Hunter. These four images show a pretty clear record of your meeting with Joe Biden in, in May of 2017, Mr. Bobolinsky. Hunter Biden, during his transcribed interview, testified that the meeting did, in fact, take place. And after being asked, did Mr. Bobolinsky meet with your father during the trip, Hunter stated he met with him in the lobby of the hotel. When asked who attended the meeting, Hunter replied, my uncle and myself. But when asked whether the meeting at the Beverly Hilton between Joe Biden, Jim Biden, Hunter Biden, and Tony Bobolinsky took place, Jim Biden testified, absolutely not. These stories don't match up. Mr. Chairman, Joe Biden, uh, Jim Biden also told the committee that Joe Biden did not meet the Chinese businessman, Yu Jing Ming. Rob Walker, by known as a friendly witness committee, said the opposite. So, Mr. Chairman, it appears to me that there are material inconsistencies between the witnesses' testimony. These witnesses' statements appear to me to be irreconcilable. In short, Mr. Chairman, someone appears to be lying to the committee. The inconsistent testimony seems to come from Jim Biden, the president's brother. Uh, lying to Congress is a serious offense, Mr. Chairman, a criminal one, in fact. And if the Bidens or anyone else uh, has come before this committee and lied to this committee, I strongly encourage the committee to pursue criminal referrals uh, to the Department of Justice. One last thing that I want to ask, and uh, Mr. Bobolinsky or Mr. Galenis, have either of you heard of any offer of a pardon for anyone involved or associated with or a partner to the Biden family enterprise corruption investigation? I'm sorry, that was a question. Have, have, have I heard you heard of anyone being, uh, being suggested that a pardon might be in order for anyone associated with this enterprise? I, I have not. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Bobolinsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yield back. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I just have a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you. Um, but we've heard for months now um, and seen the, the photo of that BlackBerry with the cracked screen. Does the committee have in its possession the data from Mr. Bobolinsky's phone from which he's allegedly taken these pictures? Because I think we need the data that they keep referring to. And maybe Mr. Bobolinsky could just turn it over to us where we could subpoena it today. We have the images that we have shared with you. Right, I saw the picture of the cracked BlackBerry, but do we have the underlying texts that are being referred to by my friend, Mr. Palmer? Mr. Bobolinsky previously said he'd be happy to turn over his phone. We have, we have pictures of all the text message screenshots that we've provided with everyone on the committee. Okay. And all right, well, of course, he's just given us, obviously, the ones he's selected.